Hi, good evening. I'm Sarah Chiu. Uh, happy spring. Today should be the beginning of spring and the sun is coming out. It's a nice day. Um, I am continuing my program, Basket Starfish, our language core. Once again, if you think that I am talking too fast, you know, you can always go back to the YouTube and type in the program's name and you can watch it again. Or you can actually call CCTV Cambridge and leave them a message and tell me that I'm too fast or something okay so today I'm going to continue with the H but uh, with the transition to the S sound okay because uh, a lot of the language we have is based on the knowledge of human being uh, making their uh, tools you know to to begin our human civilization you see that the rope uh, the thread is a very very basic thing that we human being depends on from the very very beginning so I will start uh, now because I se never seem to have time to finish even one idea so uh, but I will start with the slides you know give you a rough idea of what uh, my research is first of all uh, it's called basket starfish our language core uh, because because I travel around for more than 30 years now, more than 20 years of them, you know, I actually concentrate on the searching for the uh, connection between all ancient uh, human languages. And this is the image of the basket starfish. As you can see, we share one core because all of our languages are related. No language is isolated. So uh, what we are speaking now is still kind of remnants of the original core of the language. So if we can look at language that way there will be no hierarchy so I actually want us to change our view you know uh, of looking at human language and of course I am a woman I present to you you know a woman from the East uh, point of view so I hope you will find some valid points in my research and once again, uh, today I'm going to talk to you about the H transition to the S. And as I said, you know, these are two main sounds that uh, the world's language used to de describe either the heritage or the air and, and all those. And um, I will start now because I will never be have time enough to finish that. Okay, air with me. Okay. Okay, first of all, um, I think sometimes we do not read and uh, I want us to uh, think a little bit uh, of, you know, what we always think we, we are able to do. I actually sometimes think we are too modern or too educated to really read. And if you think uh, reading is so important, you will see that a lot of the people in the world, you know, they are actually illiterate until the re very recent, you know, uh, ages. So uh, how are they going to survive in the human world without the ability that you have in terms of reading? So obviously they read things in a very difficult uh, way from you from you so uh, your education actually gives you a different perspective and I am trying to introduce you uh, to how the ancient look at their world and how they read messages okay so um, a lot of the language is actually built on human beings reality uh, first of all uh, I want to show you uh, a lot of the uh, uh, the images that uh, the ancients definitely had to deal with. From the very, very beginning, as uh, I said, you know, the thread is a very important human invention. It actually drives our human civilization. From the first piece of string that we made to weave into a mat to shield us from the cold ground and uh, to uh, gradually when we manipulate more material, then we begin to weave our clothes to protect us from the cold and also you know all the strings that form into nets and, and traps for us to catch the food that uh, we lived on and also you know be, we begin to uh, dominate a little bit of the natural environment we begin to move around all the strings and ropes we need in order to sail around uh, even in uh, just a long river 
first before we we think we can go to the ocean actually i actually of the idea that human being actually has dominated that a long long time ago you know we sailed the seven seas you know a long time ago and then up to the uh, 16th 17th century when the west you know what i call the west began to dominate the world just by this high technique of manipulation of different kinds of ropes only because they have uh, this domination of ropes that they begin to sail around the world colonize the whole world and turn the world into what we live now okay and um, again but the writing actually started uh, since a long time ago this is an ancient Sumerian her sound and then if you look at it uh, 90 degrees straight you will understand it and if you give it a little bit of imagination knowing that it's actually trailing around you will understand that why a lot of the uh, thread wood you know actually started with an H uh, the English didn't preserve uh, that but uh, there is an English word hank h-a-n-k hank i should say hank and then the verb h-a-n-g hank and that is also uh, the original core and then this is the hieroglyph this is the chinese they are all related to the rope and with the he sound and then uh, i as i said you know i will gradually uh, transfer it over to the s and the z sound as if uh, if you are a weaver yourself you know you will understand that you know this is what they call the s trail on the Z trail and only by combining these two basic uh, little thread that you begin to have the first stronger thread that we meant we are uh, invented as a human being so uh, in order to make this her the, the full thread you have the smaller S and the smaller Z you know to trail into one to make a stronger thread and actually the S sound already preserved in ancient um, Sumerian this is Sumerian as I said this is also Sumerian both of them represent something about trailing and, and making of thread and this one is actually connected to the rope itself and um, you will see that this is ancient, um, I mean the old Hungarian runic and it is used as an S and this is what they, uh, this is uh, South Arabic, um, oh sorry, this is South Arabic, this is South Arabic. One is the S, the other is the Z, it's just a way of uh, showing you different ways of trailing exactly like reality itself and then um, the uh, the shape in the Sumerian that's actually carry out or carry on by the Phoenician and ancient Hebrew this is Phoenician ancient Hebrew her sometimes they turn it horizontally I will talk about it a little bit later but then this is uh, their old Hungarian runic as you can see they are basically the same thing uh, each culture preserve part of the whole thing and this is the Hungarian actually preserved this as his her H sound and of course that become you know the Latin and the Greek H sound and as I said you know the H sometimes it has an her sound sometimes it come with a very light airy H sound and, and that's why I put it into two different colors to distinguish them first of all this thread actually form a lot of even English words you say hang Heard heritage, hegemony, and then in inherent. So you will see that all this H, you know, is actually function even inside English as um, a visual sign, you know, for you to know what it's what it is dealing with. So when it turns sideways, as I said, you know, it already appear in the ancient uh, Hebrew and also Phoenician. They have two direction. One is vertical, the other is horizontal. And of course, you know, you can also link them to words like hedge, hurdle, hinder and hot and of course you know uh, human beings mind is very very versatile so you can understand it easily why the H can be used in completely polar meanings completely opposite meaning okay um, I will uh, pay more I will show you more in the, is this essential human technology the making of thread the Sumerian started have this you know you just have to imagine it uh, 90 degrees and then uh, turning around also trailing around and this is hieroglyph they all, this is Chinese they all bear the same sound and um, all the uh, Semitic uh, world and the Chinese world whenever you see hai, hat, hat, they are all dealing with thread and hang it and and hang themselves all dealing with rope and thread okay and the Greek 
form become like this you can say that it's part of this but this is actually the more simple a symbol is the more meaning it can incorporate into itself so other than the trailing around and then you can actually look at it as uh, crossing each other and you can also look at it as a joining act you know so the more simple a sim uh, symbol is you know the more complex it actually become okay so um, the Sumerian also have this as an S or a sh sound and then as I said the form actually come this way in ancient Hebrew maintain the H form you know now and then but then the hieroglyph have uh, forms like this uh, it maintains this sh uh, S sound and actually you will see later on what this can mean um, actually Chinese have something like this we uh, we understand it as a uh, making things into a single one as you can see it's true like trailing two threads into one we have it the pronunciation of sin or sim okay so um you will see that uh, actually this c right there is a very sharp sound we use it as the silk as you can see in uh, as you can hear that in english so we at least uh, we need at least two th little thread of uh the silk uh, worm thread to make into one uh, uh, little thread that is actually workable okay because they are actually too thin and then uh, there is a Greek word sindon as you can see they actually as you will see that it is actually the trilling uh, movement of the thread again so a lot of the writing themselves actually is showing movements and it actually means fine clothes in ancient time of course you know as you can see this actually I will bring you in English with silk this is all coordinated with each other sin or silk okay and then the uh, hieroglyph has this is definitely to mean rope or thread or string and again the Chinese uh, word getting more complicated this is sin in Cantonese sound and it actually means a thread a wire okay and then the serena in, in Greek again it means summer clothes and on this side in English I can you can uh, understand it as something satin and sash still something very fine or make made of thin thread okay so uh, there is a Sumerian word soup soup is actually means um, the the sedge the, the grass itself as you can see they actually uh, make this plant they draw out the plant a group of the plants and then to tell you that they are the material to make the rope you know so and this is an hieroglyph saw for you this is already made into a product you can look at it as a, ho as a hobble and and one way or the other either it goes to the H way or it, it goes to the S way okay so uh, as you can see this is already a made product made of very rough material the hobble of animal to, to hurt an animal okay and the Chinese has this writing you know as you can see this grass growing on top right there this is our uh, what we call a determinative we see the, uh, we look at them to understand which area this word has to do with so we have sa so or su uh, to make uh, something very rough you know as you can see sometimes you know those uh, sedge we can weave into a wrinkle we call them sa or, or so or sometimes you you know as you can see we draw the determinative there we draw our snake there and we have the sound sing sing is actually a thick rope okay so in uh, Greek you have this sakos sakos actually mean a very uh, coarse cloth of course you know in English it's very easy for you to link to the sedge the material itself the rough grass which make into sacks you know so either you 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 use the sacks to to put things in as a bag or you wear those sack clothes you know they are all the same material weave uh, of weave okay so the Greek actually have this as I said there's a trailing movement the S this is the Sigma and this is Estrel and this is the press an S and this is the South Arabian S and this is South Arabian Z and this is the Z uh, trail and, and one is clockwise and the other is anti-clockwise so if you throw them together they make a perfect uh, thread okay so as you can see all this writing itself you know part of it you can actually recognize it is closely linked to the uh, early technology because the people were actually most of the people were dealing with truly 
bearing threats or ropes or whatever. If we didn't do that, there would be no possible human civilization. Um, Okay, I bring out this word, the booba kiki effect. You know, you can Google it a little bit to understand it because I show you here is actually quite interesting. Whenever the vowel like E, A sound is, is, is people uh, normally put, uh, 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 I mean, link them to with very, very thin shape, you know. So when the O, R sound is uh, involved, people actually link them with thicker, uh, objects. So it's very very obvious here whenever you see sin si, it's a very thin thread. When you so, say sin sa so, they are all thick ropes. So this is very very interesting that it actually coincides with what the linguist said, the booba kiki effect. Um, go and Google about it and you will understand it more, okay? So, um, I will show you about the reality, uh, the speech, the I mean the relationship between the reality and speech and how we easily bring it into abstraction. And this is uh, what I see most of the time when I lived in the Arab world. And actually you see a lot of this grass being sowed for different purposes. And of course you won't see it in a developed world, you know, you are far away from the source of anything. So sometimes, you know, I think we are too educated and too far removed from reality to understand a lot of the real etymology. So um, I also see a lot of these uh, kind of things, you know, so they can make into tons of different things. They can be a window, they can be a, um, a screen, they can be a sieve, they can be a fish trap, you know, all the same thing just depends on how you are using it, okay? So the Sumerian at the beginning pictograph, they have something like this obviously a weave then they begin to distinguish it more and more this is sa this is also sa but sometimes they add an h right there s a h okay but they all mean a bundle or a net or a sieve or a bed you know as you can see if you put it down on the floor you can actually lie on top of it and it become a bed and, and a mat okay so um interestingly this sa sound and in arabic sala and also hebrew sal is actually a basket so it depends on how thick the basket is you can actually also use it as a sieve now you have to pay attention to this sa sa si okay and i show you a chinese writing look compare this and also this and then uh, it ended up in chinese with tons of different writing according uh, to the the other thousands of years of development so it always uh, circle around the sai or sao or sai or this sound it all means a basket a sieve um, and all the uh, screen you know all with all means the same thing and then of course in English I will uh, give to you the sedge the sisal or the sieve you know they are all within the same core you know and then the Chinese also have this you know temporarily sometimes you know use it as a sieve because it become a very uh, very concrete form and then uh, but it actually become a very abstract thing when we put a hard part next to the sieve it actually uh, becomes become the sound of sick or see or, 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 or sick okay so what does this mean it means actually knowledge someone who is knowledgeable and, and someone who knows okay of course the same sound will also uh, exist in English is savan or say sage or homo sapien the sapien or the uh, the sophie so the sophia from Greek okay so this sa so see why is it because you know they actually believe that um, your intelligence comes from your clearness so this clearness actually is borrowed from the sif itself and if you don't believe you go to a museum when you never you see the uh, renaissance pictures when the symbolism was still very very strong a very uh, at um, various time you will look at the picture when they draw a sif they are actually 
uh, implying that the person in the picture next to the sif or something like that would be uh, a lot knowledgeable person or that person is very clear headed so this is very very easy for people un to understood even in the renaissance it's only because we are so modern we only educated in reading letters we forgot about all the symbolism that is incorporated into our languages for thousands and thousands of years that's why I kept saying that we might be too educated to be able to read in a different sense okay so I will go back uh, again to bring you back to the ancient world so I say between a block and a book you know you will see that they are all made from the same material this is the Chinese writing this is what we call San okay and even in this I can bring you two different writing one is like the fence itself as you can see very clearly the other San is actually a bolt you know as you can see is a bar you know uh, in front of the door that means to bolt you to block the door or also we use it as a verb you know to close the door as the Arab will use sat you know so they will also use sat to close the door okay so uh, this is a German word now is sound okay and this is an Arabic sound they both means fence okay so only by looking at reality itself you understand what people are saying so when people were living in that environment it is very easy for people to understand things but now when you read books and when you see a word you really have to go into the dictionary to find out what they mean but why is it that the ancient do not need a dictionary because they see the reality they also understand that the same thing depend on how they were used will be called by a different name okay Okay, so um, as you can see, I will uh, show you my ability to read pictures, you know, so you can also learn a little bit how to read pictures. And this is also a Chinese word. This is uh, with a pair of hands, this become the book, okay? So um, when we put the book right there, we, if we actually put it higher up. This is a base, you know, we show that if we put it higher up, it becomes not only a a uh, normal book it means a canon itself you know the law you know something you have to obey and of course if I show you an ancient Chinese book you will understand why it it is so easy for people to understand you know by pictures so and I will show you a lot of uh, concepts which actually come from the same uh, weaving itself, okay? The map can become a raincoat, right? And then a lot of these things uh, came from the weaving. And then if you use it on the roof, it become a roof and become a protection. Of course, the word safe is also closely re related to that. Of course, a pair of sandal is come from the same weave. You know why is it called sandal? The first uh, part of the word is actually linked to that also as I said you know if you lay it down on the floor it also become a mat it also become a dwelling itself and then it uh, depends on how you weave it and the ancient actually understand very easily you know it can be uh, used as a wall it can be used as a door and of course the word separation this part sap itself it's actually closely linked to anything weaved okay and then it become a trap and become a cage and of course you know it is a set up to you know to catch your prey and then of course it's a book it's a canon it's a law and also basically it's become a sieve okay when water goes through it but then also I want you to see See a very interesting word which you never think they are related. The word seismic, you know, the earthquake is actually really closely related to the sieve itself. This is how the ancient described an earthquake, okay? So uh, you have to have your imagination, you have to bring yourself back to thousands and thousands of years ago to understand what people see. So now I give you um, again how, you know, gathering up uh, threads to make a hang, uh, a, a kind of a rope, and it's all slowly closely related to all these ideas like synergy, symphony, and assemble. As you can see, this sin, sim, sam, okay? And you will see that this is Sumerian, this is a it has closely related to, to bind something together. This, this, you can see, you know, they bind fibers together, and even in uh, what you call the cuneiform, if you 
know what you're looking at, every cuneiform also begin to make sense, right? This is an S, this is Chinese sin or sim. And we definitely understand they are all these meanings, okay? And then uh, the hieroglyph has this sin or shin. And then the old Hungarian runic has this, uh, you look at it, you can pronounce it as sin, but then it later it's actually mutated into something like a J sound. But I will tell you uh, later how the mutation comes to be. And But you can see that it's a three thread uh, in going into one, okay? So um, the ancient Sumerian, this is, you know, the Semek. Semek is to join three together, as I said. The uh, linear Near B, this is a Sa, also closely related to making thread. The Sanskrit Sa, uh, if you speak Sanskrit or Hindi, you will know that Sa is to the word with, together with, okay? So the it's closely related to the Greek Sin. And of course, you know, when I say Sin, you will understand this very, very more than you think, very, very more than a symbol. Whenever you are in symphony with someone, whenever you assemble someone, whenever you are in, in synergy with someone you will wear a thread to show that you agree with someone's ideology right and of course this sash itself is also worn by the queen and all the royal family because for them this is actually the bloodline that they represent okay and this is the latin word sora and which is the, your, the word sister and because it was a matriarchal world so as i said again and again this should belong to uh to the queen who has actually the blood a relationship to the ruling family not a wife of a king okay so again it has to do with a consort when you uh, throw two together into one and now you begin to see some abstraction and these are all the uh, words in three number three okay as you can see they easily with the, the three and this is also a three they all represent the s sound okay and then the hebrew two you know this is sin or shin as you can count it's three and uh, of course shalosh the hebrew word three is come from there this is the chinese word c as i said combining this is the chinese word psalm it actually means three and um, we begin to jam things together the chinese jam things together to mean puro the same the hieroglyph the means okay so nothing has ever ever changed and then the sam actually also also slowly mutated into the gem sound so they are basically you know all from the same core itself so um i will stop right here because um i don't have time to go on my next slide but uh you can go back to the youtube please you know because if you understand this part you understand